You are now driving down a long, dark stretch of road, just on the outside of town. You can see light far ahead of you, but behind you is pure darkness. And to your sides are trees reaching their arms to the night sky. As you move ever forward, you start to feel as if something is watching you. And before you know it, you feel its presence chasing you as you begin to speed along the road until it gets past you. Landing in the road in front of you, as you slam on your brakes, you can see in your headlights that it is your Time Sweeps host. Hello and welcome. I am Wyatt Zirkel. I'm Connor Meinke. I'm Gary Monaghan. Today we are talking about what goes bump in the night. Cryptids, urban legends, folk tales, and then some. Now join us as we look at what hides behind the shadows. All right. Do you guys want me to start out with a little story for you that you might not know, or do we want to start with what our favorite cryptids are? Um, let's start with what our favorite cryptids are. All right. And well, give a reason why. Who wants to go first? You start, since you you're, want me to start? you're the most uh, experienced in this arena. I do have a wi- wide variety to choose from. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to say, my favorite is probably Mothman. Mm-hmm. Any viewer that knows knows me personally, they've probably seen my Mothman hat. Yes. Mothman shirt. I, I just overall love the love Mothman. There's just something about him, it's just fun. Ever since I was young, I've just liked Mothman. No particular reason. It's just Mothman. Mm-hmm. Well, so mine's a little generic. I, mine's Bigfoot, just because I've always connected with him on a personal level. <laughs> we uh we both share big feet and a little stinky. I'm not as stinky. I mean, I, I'm very well hyg- hyg- hygiened. What is that? Yeah, that's a word. We'll say that. But I like Bigfoot. He's just always been around, you know? Like, everyone's always called me Bigfoot. It's kind of been like a nickname. And I'm like, it's probably more for teasing me. <laughs> but I always took it as a compliment. Yeah, I have big feet. What's up? But Come at me. <laughs> come at me, bro. I have big feet. Um. So, what? yeah. You want to find the real reason why nobody <laughs> finds Bigfoot? Because of what he does. Because of what he does. But yeah, that's mine. What do you think, Connor? Um, my uh, my new favorite cryptid is shit. What was it? Was it Maurice or was it Morris? M- Morris. Morris. Oh, Morris. yeah, Morris, the the creature from. It, that's it's techni- a real creature. It's yeah, technically a cryptid <clears throat> from from folktale legend. Yeah. Just I don't remember what he was actually called, but like when, we, when we say more, is that what it was? Daijin or Daijin or whatever. Well, so there, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Morris. I, I, I can't really think of any others right now. So Morris is my new favorite, just because. Of You're Morris. telling me the Mongolian death worm isn't your favorite? I why you, you scrub? I, I, I watch, you scrub? I watch video game. <clears throat> I, I play video games, watch anime, and read comic books. I I I'm not really a cryptid i don't really watch a lot of stuff about cryptids so he's not a monster man like you Wyatt. i am the monster man <laughs> so you guys want to hear a little story <laughs> tell us the story it's Wyatt. a story for our viewers too Every, everybody gather around and sit around the campfire why it's going to tell you a story i'm very excited okay. this is the story of the missouri mud walker i've never heard of this creature the Missouri Mud Walker. Now, are we familiar with the fact that the Missouri River can also be called the Big Muddy because of how much silt is in the river? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. I've heard Some, that. Before. Sometimes that's a thing that not everybody knows and we need to throw out there. So the Missouri River being known as the Muddy. Is are you guys also familiar with the story of La Llorona? I am La not. Llorona? The or, woman in white. No, I don't know that story. Well it's it's kinda similar to that. It was a woman who, I believe, the story as it goes, she drowned kids in the river and then kind of became like a her own children. Oh, I say that like it makes it better, but it became like. <laughs> oh, a, it's, don't worry about it. It was her own children. It's okay. <laughs> she didn't steal kids. She made she, them. She made them. She and made they them and then drowned them. It's like when you make a. Cut that out. What's what's your analogy there? What? <laughs> Just cut that out. Where are you going? No, that's in. <laughs> well, I was gonna say cut it out because I couldn't remember the word. <laughs> origami swan and you just hate it and you crush it in your hand kind of like that mm. <laughs> <laughs> this kid sucks they're on it <laughs> this kid is more of a disappointment than the last one. Oh yeah viewers we forgot to mention we have a 
guest with us today in the form of Zion the dog. He's currently resting between Wyatt and I. Uh, now he now he's up because I mentioned him. He's and hello, Zion. I'm giving you a handshake. He's Hi. having a good time here. Hello. All right. Anyway. Yeah, the Missouri Mudwalker. So it's similar to that. It was once It's a woman? woman? Yes. Okay. So similar to the story of the woman in white. <coughs> drowned some kids, and then she drowned herself out of grief. But here's the where it starts to get a little different. So Missouri River, big muddy. It's not exactly the best place to go drowning. Right. You know, on your, your weekend hobbies. Mm-hmm. So lots of mud, kind of a rushing river at the time. This was like post-Civil War. So when the story starts, might be older. I've always heard it post-Civil War, just after the war. Mm-hmm. And in grief, she just, <coughs> she drowned her kids or her husband. Either way. She drowned someone she drowned that she was close she was, to. Yeah. So she drowns them. She, out of grief, jumps in the river, too. But as the story goes, she supposedly got stuck in the mud. Mm-hmm. Got The river pushed her into the mud, and then so when she drowned, it was more like her lungs filled with just silt from the river flowing right into her mouth. So the idea comes that she drowned in the mud more so than the actual water of the river, which, in reality, I don't think that's very true. But, so the story goes that supposedly you can see Ever so often, a woman walking across the riverbank dressed in some 1800s clothes, just covered in mud. Have you seen this? I can't say 100% if I have seen it, because I also don't know if I actually believe in these stories. Like, I find them fun, but I don't know if I truly... It's a good... The, these things are good to make movies out of. Yeah, they're fun stories. They're mm-hmm. like fairy tales. Right. I, I would agree with that. But... To say I've seen somebody walking by the riverbank, yeah. Do I know if it's something, you know, beyond us, a monster, a creature, a ghost, a whatever, a mud walker? I don't know. But viewers, please tell me that I'm <laughs> that you've also heard of the mud walker. Comment down. I've down never below. heard of this mud walker lady. Um, but she's obviously an amateur because the same thing happened with Sandman, but the, it was just dry and he got superpowers. So. <laughs> 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 but so, but uh, the biggest one that probably most of our I'm viewers sorry, my mind went to like the ha- old halo meme it's like nothing personal kid <laughs> <laughs> pops up behind you after being invisible and kills you with just like an energy sword nothing personal kid just be better at drowning <laughs> just be better at drowning drowning style <laughs> get superpowers <laughs> <laughs> um the 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 main creature that we might that most of our viewer, uh, listeners are probably most familiar with is Bigfoot, if we think about it. Because he's everywhere. Or yeah. it, not he. It's, it is everywhere. It's an American... It's, it, it's a thing. There's, it's an American it. There's tons of little road stop shops that are big based off of Bigfoot in America. Like I, I guarantee there's probably more stores centered around Bigfoot than most things in America. <laughs> Because you'll find gas stations with entire corners dedicated to Bigfoot. Right. And parks with stores dedicated to Bigfoot. I would even went to the West Virginia Bigfoot Museum. Mm-hmm. And the Mothman Museum. Yeah. And the Flatwoods Monster Museum. All right. I'm going to let him out. Where were we? Uh, Bigfoot all around the country. You can just find Bigfoot everywhere. Yes. He is. I, except I except don't... maybe the Mojave Desert. <laughs> I don't know how many Bigfoot stickers you see on cars, on laptops, on computer towers. Like I have at least twelve on my com- on my computer alone. Yeah, I think I see more Bigfoot stickers than I see like stick figure and families he, and coexist. Right. And like it, he's definitely. Or I keep saying he. It, it's he, it. 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 She is the most. Day. <laughs> right. Is the most popular, more widespread, more and ingrained in our culture for something that is most likely fictional. Yeah, it is the American monster. Right. Like, I, I am 90% sure that there's a lot of people out there that, like, when they think of the United States of America, or just North America... They think of a hairy, big-footed man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like people will often go to, like, Who's that? That's George Washington. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's foot, George Washington. Bigfoot crossing big the Delaware River. <laughs> 
I remember where I was when Bigfoot fought for my freedom of. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna make like Bigfoot King George, George with Washington bare feet. in Photoshop now. Do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I will do it now. I was gonna say if you can get it before when if you can get it soon that could be our thumbnail. <laughs> oh, that's up to you. Oh, yeah. uh, what's the like the the biggest? It was like the first video of Bigfoot. What's what's that oh, footage named? I don't remember the name of that. It's footage. named after the guy. Yeah, but like we could you could use that picture. Yeah, and it's then a, put it's, George Washington's face on it. It's a really famous. Actually, that would that would work. It's in the right positioning. Right, like that where it's walking through the river. Uh huh. I forget. I'm gonna look it up right now because that is like basically the Bigfoot picture. It's the Bigfoot video that, and it's like <laughs> 60 years old. If it I'm, is at if, this point, if I'm not. If I'm correct about that, I mean, uh, it was the 1960s. It had to have been the 1960s. Legendary Patterson, the Patterson footage, like the Patterson, yeah, film. the Patterson like, footage, like that is the most hardcore evidence we have of Bigfoot actually being a real. But if that came out like 60 years ago, like, and we haven't gotten anything else with technology advanced, unless. This is where the theory is coming. The government doesn't want us to know it, it exists. Why? Wait, why? why? What purpose does that <laughs> hold? That's like that's my reason for the the moon landing being fake and the earth being flat. Why would the government just want to lie about that? I mean, I get the moon landing a little. Yeah, like, to just prove a point to the Soviet right. Union. But even then, it's like, you're you don't think, on the moon. You don't think we've been to the moon by now? Like, even to say that that footage is fake? Okay, whatever. But to say that we haven't been to the moon by now? Like, seriously. Yeah. We're sending rockets into space every week. We, they might not have humans on them, but still. We we've had we had the power in 1969 to do it. So it's right. Like, I yeah. And Bigfoot also goes by many names as well. Yeah, we there's a hole for the Sasquatch idea. There's all sorts of stuff. You have the skunk ape in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, even Missouri has like the Momo. One of the, one of the most. In, like in terrifying pictures of Bigfoot, in quotation marks. It, I'll put a picture on the screen right now. It's just this skunk ape. It's like oh, the like label where skunk its eyes ape are glowing, glowing, and its face is just like you can just see just a little bit of teeth, but it's blurry enough to be like, what am I looking at? It's it's so terrifying. Like I don't know. Like so, I got really into Bigfoot about. It was in middle school. Like I was like I was like I'm gonna find this mother this mother trucker. I'm gonna find him and I'm gonna find him. <laughs> good job, bud. So I did all the research. You're doing a good job so far. <laughs> I did all the research. I watched so many YouTube videos. Look out for our travel blog. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did all this research into this freaking thing that is most likely not even real. Um, like 99 percent chance that it's probably fake. So. Like, I don't know. I was just like, I'm going to find this thing, and I'm going to prove everyone wrong because I was a hardcore believer in Bigfoot. And, like, I'd stay up for, like, hours a night. Hours past my bedtime because, you know, bedtime was, like, 9.30. Little did Gary know. He was just looking at a video of himself at the age of three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hearing hey, my mind went to this just like this really sad moment of him sitting in a corner and it's like the the screen's off. He just sees the <laughs> reflection of himself. He's just I like, will find oh. you. One day. I will find Bigfoot. I will find him. I will find you. It's like this soul searching journey that goes over a lifetime to find Bigfoot. I think my foot to body ratio is too like it's not like I, I feel like I'd have to be way shorter to be like have like to have a real Bigfoot aspect so you, ratio. Then you'd just be a hobbit. Right. Yeah, at that point, you're are we really hobbit. just looking for hobbits? Just what if that's the case? What is what if Bigfoot is just a hobbit? What if Bigfoot's just Shaquille O'Neal in hobbit form? <laughs> that's possible. Shaquille O'Neal's like, I feel like for I feel like to for me to be like a Bigfoot, I'd have to have like Shaquille O'Neal's foot on my size body. Like I'm not as tall as Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, for the relative like size ratio. Right. I'm not as tall as Shaquille O'Neal, but like I'm only like five shoe sizes shoe sizes under him but like i'm i'm not that short of six seven six eight six nine six ten six eleven seven foot seven one i think he's seven one i'm six inches shorter than him five shoe sizes sh sh uh below him so he's a big man oh but while we're on the topic of bigfoot and the idea of sasquatch and like these ape-like figures like I said, in Missouri, like, we have the Momo, which is often also associated as the Missouri Monster. 
there's not much to it other than it's basically just Bigfoot again. But for sometimes it's often like shown to have like large red eyes. Hmm. I'm not familiar with the Momo. There's also, Wait. of course, the Yeti. The Yeti. Momo. I was going to say Yeti. That sounds familiar. Secret Saturdays? They might have had it on the okay. Secret Saturdays. Okay. The, I was gonna say Yeti, the like the Yeti variant is like <laughs> yeah, like and, and another area in Asia that's relatively it's it's closer than you know North America. Right. Yeah. But like from the Himalayas over into like Mongolian mountains. It's yeah. Kind yeah. of a distance mm-hmm. there. Or it also mentions the Caucasus Mountains, but like there's a creature that people would refer to as the Alma, the Almas, Almasti, and it's also similar to just an ape man. Right. And even Australia has its own story of an ape man. Do you think the Yeti was, like, do, what do you think was based on which? Do you think the Bigfoot was based on the Yeti, or do you think Yeti was based off of Bigfoot? I think it's, judging by how many places have stories, I think everyone's seen a different story, and nobody knew each other's stories until, like, I would say much closer in history. Okay. Well, because that well, and then that raises some suspicion. The like, Yeti has always been a story, or the, the Yowie in Australia. He's always he's an Aboriginal story. See, and like how how are all these people making these stories, having these stories that goes without a, even having contact with each a other? A bunch of folklore creatures. Like, there's always shapeshifters. There's always dragons, and there's always some kind of vampire type creature. Mm-hmm. So many cultures have these stories and they have these Did, legends, these monsters. And well, like how far back can we trace these stories? Well, they're like, all ancient, right? So, like, it's it's as if. Do you everybody... think there was a time where these things actually existed? I think we would have more evidence for certain. I things. mean, there were probably. Um, I think for ape like, creatures, we'd have more I mean, evidence, I, well, but like that's the, more likely than a vampire. Few, like one of the versions of like Homo sapiens, not Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens or us, but like. The one of the like hominid species before like Homo erectus, home like I more of the like the contemporary like, stuff like, like the like stuff that like the Holman stuff that like, like whenever I can't like whenever thing, we Neanderthals. first started walking, we had a lot more like that hump version genuses like hum- yeah basically whenever we like so like we the probably time of at one point Homo erectus looked, yeah like we probably at one point kind of looked like Sasquatches. Well, could they? So the what people have gathered from all the stories is that there was this ape called the Gigantopithecus. And even that, it's huge. It, the Gigantopithecus is like Massive. humongous. It's a megafauna. Yeah. Like, and people think that that's what Bigfoot is. Is like this thing makes a gorilla look like a baby. Right. I'm gonna look up the exact dimensions right now. <laughs> dimensions. Like, I'm what putting... volume does it have? <laughs> um, how big was the Gigantopithecus? How long is he? I need to know how many cubic inches. <laughs> you made me type how long. <laughs> but yeah, I I think Alfred in certain Molina. cases, like in Damn each it, culture, didn't work. <laughs> it does have different you know connotations of these things. Like in certain cultures, like dragons aren't bad. Right. Like well, a good see, example is like in, more Asian cultures yeah. versus. Europe, mm-hmm. like the story of Saint George who slayed the dragon because the dragon. Was I evil. saw this meme once, and it kind of got me thinking. Do you think all these stories of these creatures were invented before glasses were invent like invented? So people well, they would blur- certainly were. People with bad vision was just like, "Did you see that dragon? This- that massive lizard flying through the sky with massive wings? Dude, that was a bird. No, I swear that was a dragon. Like, homie, that was a kite. Right." <laughs> I think well, that still happens to this so, day. So the Gigantopithecus was about nine feet tall and weighed between 440 pounds and 660 pounds. Yeah, I that feel like... That is if, a massive human... If that's like, what Bigfoot was. That's a massive yeah. creature. And I, and I do want to put this out there. When we talk about like Bigfoot being something like a Neanderthal, Neanderthals are shorter than you think. Like yeah. They have the right face look. And they had probably the right amount of hair for the most part. They're kind of like Wolverine comics versus movies. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like movies, they're big, like yeah, hulking ever, creatures. Everyone thinks Neanderthals are giant. No, they're like 5'6". Yeah, they're like they're like Wolverine in the comics, not like Wolverine in the movies. They're like 5'5", five, five, short, stocky, yeah. but we'll kill you. Yeah, they were small <laughs> and stocky. They were stronger than early us. Yeah. Right. Well, we, we had numbers on them. That's oh, yeah, how we had... That's how we knocked them out of existence. Like... 
Homo sapiens killed ne- Neanderthals. Yeah, we we wiped them out and interbred. Right. That's me <laughs> using the words that YouTube likes more. <laughs> we, we were just crazy enough to go, okay. We, Let's we start want... killing things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, exactly. That's why our species made it this far. And I think that's why... <laughs> Something new. Kill it. I think... <laughs> essentially. I think that's why it's like almost evolutionary that humans will die petting things. Because nature is finally like... We need to put a stop to this. <laughs> it's like they need to go pet bears or something. I so like some that... dude was born and he was like, I'm gonna go pet the soft spot on a bear. <laughs> it, it reminds I was me watching of... this this Snapchat story of it was like it was a fail army story and it was like fails with animals. And I just don't think people understand that these creatures are wild animals. People no. walking up to bears. I'm like, that is a grizzly bear. That thing is meant to to kill or, you. Are you talking about that video of the woman like trying to snow white a bear away from her kayak? No, not that video. Oh, that's a that's good one. That's, <laughs> that's a Go <laughs> away, no way, bear. Bear. Quit eating my kayak. Whoa, oh. bear. I, I'm going to spray you in the face. I will now. spray you in the face with my bear spray if you don't get <laughs> quit I, eating I, my kayak. No, I this when it, the bear just looks over his shoulders. Okay, this, do it. This, Cry about it. This wom- Stop it. The video with this woman and this bear on, that I saw was a woman just, there was a bear, there. it was like kind of like a drive through zoo almost, uh, but I think it was just like a natural Like a nature place. park. Right. And this woman gets out of her car, like she's going to go squat up with the bear, like, and she's just, and then she goes to pet it, and he, he like jumps at her, and she's like all freaking out. I'm like, what did you expect? This thing is a wild animal. This thing is made to eat you. Like, ri- like, it you actually in particular. is. Right. Black, black bears are worse. Like black bears are more aggressive. Even oh, though yeah. they're, even well, though because they're because they get scared. They're so little. Right. They're they're like grizzly bears. They they just stand up in the wild, and they're like, I'm taller than you. Yeah. Why? And grizzly bear, grizzly bears, black bears. That's why you carry like crap on you to just like well like if you go black bear if you go black bear hunting with a bow not with a rifle but if you go bow hunting for black bear they say to bring a sidearm because if you miss with your arrow <laughs> you're screwed you're man. Get ready <laughs> you are screwed and but you have, have to like contact the game warden if you end up killing it with a handgun like you have to because it's it, illegal you'll get in trouble yeah. like if you don't report it right like if, Life or death. Uh, if you, you have to if you go it. hunting, do it responsibly, people. Kill bears correctly. <laughs> kill kill bears correctly. Please don't kill the bears. <laughs> They're dying. So I went out in the to the California Zoo when I was out visiting my sister, and uh, it showed the migration pattern of black bears over like the like when we first started recording it to now, and it was like the whole United States and Canada, and now it's all of Canada and like a few spots up north and then there's just one spot in the middle of the country where Missouri is like South Missouri like they're only here they don't leave like yeah, it's because they're scared <laughs> they, they just... step out of that circle they get shot <laughs> it's because we have laws for fu- but v- they v- said like bears numbers are actually up like yeah well yeah and they're going people up. haven't really gone out anywhere for a while which is weird as it sounds I'd love the bear numbers to be up I'd love to see some bears some bears. Why? So they can kill all the idiots that we have? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I like me some bears. I like bears more than, more than most people. I th- we need to be talking about, m- like, mythical creatures. Here. Yeah. I know you have... I, I have a list. I have a long list. <laughs> We're definitely... We could have more than one episode of this. So, the Wendigo. I I don't have oh, much yeah. experience with the Wendigo. The only experience that I have with the Wendigo, along with probably some of the listeners that have played this video game, is called Until Dawn? Until dawn. It's until dawn. That's the only experience I have with Wendigos. They go into the lore a little bit. I know they're from Native American, like, um, uh, what do you call that? Legend? Legend, or, story, folk yes. tale. I know they're, they're Native American descent. Basically. Mythology. Mythology, thank you. It depends on doesn't, the area uh, of the country. It doesn't until dawn take place in Canada, though? It does, but Native American, you know. Yeah, like. North, it's the whole like, it's like, North Inuit, American Inuit, continent. Yeah. Yeah. Inuit, yeah. And that. I know they're that, and they're some sort of cannibalism monster. I, I First thing I want to do is point out that it's not really Inuit, because Inuit was much further off in direction. Oh, yeah, that's true. And you have the Wendigo, if I'm not mistaken, was more of a northeastern area type thing. And there was areas lower that also believed in it, and also further east, or further west. 
it like depended on the culture you found and who you talked to at the time and you know story story spread right the story that i know for the wendigo is is that it was a cautionary tale similar to like i i compare it to the big bad wolf kind of a thing okay except yeah. instead of don't talk to strangers being the moral of the story it's don't eat people okay because at the story the reason why wendigos become wendigos is because it always takes place during winter ideally mm-hmm. normally it's in the cold and they don't know what to do for food so one man would eat another eat the flesh of man and you transform into this monster and normally they don't just you know one person at a time it's like families they would be like well we got to eat something right. they would eat a dude and then the wendigo is like a spirit that goes through them mhm so it would be like this thing they would transform into it every so often so you have these problems with wendigos and it like this idea this spirit that goes through you and that is also not entirely correct the spirit thing it depends mm-hmm. on who you talk to which story you get we'll see because there's a very long colonial problem with it too right and it well and until dawn which again is my only experience with this cr- this cr- creature uh, like the good ending is like you set them ablaze, and then their the, their souls are finally free, and yes. they can finally die. That's part of the story that I like because they're like, and that that game like you can't kill them with bullets. Like their only weakness is fire. Yeah, in the story that I know, it's a cautionary tale, and it's like this great warrior hero. I don't remember his name. He comes and has to save them and stops these Wendigos. And the best way to kill a Wendigo is first you have to try and overpower them, mm-hmm. which is almost impossible. Right. Yeah. They're super strong. They're omnipresent kind of a deal. Mm-hmm. But when you get to them, you have to just cut them apart and take their heart out. Oh, and yeah. then you put their heart in a bonfire. It melts the ice that encapsulated around the heart because that's where the winter comes into right. play. That's why you're not supposed you're supposed to save food for the winter so that way you don't do this. Okay. And you don't become this frost, oh. disgusting ghoul encrusted heart problem mm-hmm. thing. Until dawn, again. They can transform between looking like a normal person and a monster. Other shapeshifters? As well. Kind of a... Well, so, and Until Dawn, which is, again, I'm sorry, this is my own experience with it. Uh, there's two sisters, and they fall into a cave, and one of them dies on impact, and the other one lives. The sister, being trapped in this crevice, eats her sister, becomes Wendigo, and then she's, pro- like, the main Wendigo. There's, like, two other Wendigos. I don't know how they got there. I think they were just already... Just there. ...on the mountain, Yeah. And then, and like a post credit scene type thing, her brother gets trapped down underneath the ground in like this bunker area. And then like there's bodies hanging up because the Wendigo were killing people and just hanging up their bodies to save for later. And he's trapped, so he eats one. And then the cops show up and they're looking for him. And then he's like transforming, transforming into a Wendigo and like bye bye police officers. And that's something that's like. <laughs> that I understand about Wendigos is that, like, they, they're they as smart as everyday people, of course. Right. And that's also where you kind of get the problem of what happened in Canada. You know how, like, in America we had the Salem Witch Trials? Right. Mm-hmm. They had the Wendigo Trials. Really? Yeah. So it yeah. was like, they're a Wendigo. And Who the hell they eat? Uh, yeah, that's, I think they devolved from there, and they ca- treated it like, you know, white people do, and they're like, we don't understand your funky religions. Or, well, they'd be Canadian, so they'd have a different <laughs> accent than that. We don't so, understand your, your religions, eh? <laughs> we don't understand you, eh? <laughs> so they'd be like, yeah, that person's a Wendigo. And they'd be like, well, they got Satan in them. Kill them. Yep, murder them. <laughs> <laughs> they, got, they got pagan beliefs stuck in their bodies. Would you rather be hung or would you rather be murdered by Native Americans? I, neither of these sound very good. <laughs> Like well, we're talking like like in like eighteen. Yeah, yeah. No, this was clo- close. Close. Yeah, actually, was it the eighteen hundreds? It might have been. Probably, I don't remember. I mean, it's probably. been a long like, time well, since I've looked into the Wendigo it, trials. If, <clears throat> if it was it around the time they were doing Salem witch trials, or maybe because like that sounds like a very thing like white thing that they got. They're like, oh, hey, yeah, no, look, they, the white people kill people for being witches, so we can kill people for being Wendigos. Oh no, these weren't natives doing that. Oh. This was totally white people that heard the term Wendigo, oh. and they were like, they got Satan. Oh. Even natives know Satan. Okay. And they were like, they got a funny oh, word Oh, so that's definitely, that's some definitely, that's some white people shit, man. Yeah. They, 
if I'm that's how I remember the story. I can be wrong. <laughs> I'm totally open to correction. I'm gonna check the years so I might get corrected right now. <sighs> Windigo trial. Windigo trials. But yeah, I'd I'd oft I often don't really like to consider Windigo a a cryptid. Because it's it's like I said, it to me it's kinda like the big bad wolf. Okay. And there's a lot yeah. of st- cryptid stories that can be like that, but in terms of like you know, Windigo, it started as like a folk story. Mm-hmm. It, this was a story that you told to your kids to be like, "Hey, don't eat people. Don't eat your neighbor, or right. else you're going to be a gross, disgusting monster." <laughs> don't eat your neighbor, or you will have Satan. Uh, okay, looking at this, I might have the years completely way off. And it might have been way closer. And I might have actually had it the story wrong. Which also means I didn't read it. I had somebody else tell it to me. So that that's another thing. It looks like the Windigo murder trial was a completely different set of problems where somebody said, this person's a Windigo, and then murdered them. Oh, d- just, just no trial. Yeah, just, just going Hey, for you're it. a Windigo. Murder trial is in reference to this guy and people being like, well, he thought they were a Windigo, and other people being like, yeah, but, yeah, but the maybe. Windigo ain't real. <laughs> it sounds like it was much later, like late 1800s, maybe early 1900s. So do you think the Windigo might have started out as a wives' tale? I think it started out as a complete story to tell kids, hey, cannibalism's a slippery slope. <laughs> Don't eat your neighbor. Cannibalism is bad. Because even, like, well, no, Europeans don't have that many stories that I know about cannibalism. What's that? Every uh, culture what, did it. It was in that no. cowboy age. like it, Oh, the it, Donner Party? Yes, the Don- Thank you. I was, I couldn't remember. But, yeah, that was oh, like America, a big cannibalism thing. The United States has a long history of people <laughs> getting stuck and stranded, and they're like, well, guess it's time to eat old John. <laughs> Donner Party's just one of those. It's just the most but, famous. But, like, that's the most famous one, yeah. yeah. But... There's there's a fun video I might link it in the comments or in the description if I if I go on to put that in there. It's actually a really informational video by a uh, what's the YouTuber? Atunche Films. Okay, yeah. He has a very informational video about different cannibalism problems that have happened in the United States since the United States became its own country. Hmm. Like uh the We were very poor Oregon when Trail. we got over here, so like the Oregon Trail. Yeah, that's the Donner Party. Oh yeah, Donner Party. Jeez, didn't even didn't even know how to farm. We had to, we had to be taught how to farm crops over here. Yeah, which at the same time it's like you think we was the land really that rough for you people not to understand how to farm it over here? I don't like, know. Like obviously the natives are going to know because they've been living here the whole well, time. Also, right. think about it this way. Well, different climate. Par- parts as well. of the parts of the British Isles, all you could really <laughs> it would grow be were than potatoes. That's true. Like That's like Ireland. Ireland. So. Like, potato. That's why when the potato blight happened, a lot of the a lot of people living in Ireland came over because they didn't know, they where, else didn't to go. know where else to go. And they sure ain't going to England. Exactly. Yeah, why would they go to England? There's a few reasons. If you're Irish, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, what other actual like what I would consider to be like I also don't want to I want to put this out there. There's some people that can consider Cthulhu and other Lovecraftian stuff as cryptids and it's like no but no isn't cthulhu a god yeah he's an elder god he's an elder rich horror <clears throat> he's beyond earth he just right. chooses earth to be his sleeping I bag i think so then your man's a cryptid <laughs> yeah creepy pastas creepy pasta pasta creepies yes it, that's a it, that falls into that area of like modern stories of the windigo mm-hmm. or in like a, so slenderman is not a cryptid no like he was completely fabricated like back in like 2009 so Neither like, is si- like Siren Head or like all the right. the recent monsters that are. They're still fun, and I like right. them. I enjoy mm-hmm. them, but like I I I don't want to call them cryptids, <sighs> yeah. because it's right. like though cryptids probably aren't real. Like Mothman's a story about two kids in a car that were probably <clears> making out on some hill, getting chased down the road by a flying thing. Like, it's hard. It's really hard to believe. Right. But even they experience that. But like people are like. I saw Slender Man in the woods. No, you like, didn't. The creator of Slender Man is like, you didn't see Slender Man. <laughs> you know how I know you didn't see Slender Man? Because I, I literally, he's literally my brainchild. Like, like people that are like, Siren Head's real. And then the artist that created him is like, I thought I found a fun forest picture. 
and I created <laughs> some weird monster. Right. Good day, sir. <laughs> I heard a crazy broken siren, and I made a monster about it. That's kind of like, what he did. Right. He heard this like broken siren sound from a Chicago I do think air siren. Si- yeah, I do think Siren Head is a better monster than Slenderman, though. It, it, easily more entertaining. Right. Although, like, the size proportions on him, I looked it up because I was curious. It's like 40 feet. Uh-huh. That's like, that's... Wow, I like I don't I like him more as the height of the tree line instead yeah. of forty feet. Like because forty, 40 feet. feet you're like jump you're walking over the tree line. Yeah, well, forty feet <clears throat> that that's still like bigger than you want to admit for like a creature. And twenty then, feet. Like, twenty yeah. feet's a good size. Yeah, if you want like a giant monster that could still be scary and intimidating before becoming goofy, mm-hmm. twenty feet's a good region. Right, he's Unless not a you kaiju. Can really sell it. Right, even though in kaiju size, like that's that's tiny. Yeah. That's huge. Mean, Forty yeah, feet. I mean, King Kong is technically a kaiju. He was twenty five feet tall originally. True, but yeah. look, looking at modern day kaiju's, like yeah, wasn't Godzilla only like a hundred feet tall? Fifty five, like four hundred and thirty five meters. So multiply yeah. four hundred and thirty five times three point three. He's still smaller than what he was. Is oh in yeah, no, modern in nineteen fifty four when he first came out, he was only like twenty five meters. Thirty no, twenty meters maybe. Yeah. Right. He was so much smaller. Uh, do you think that's just Amer- uh not Americans? Wait, I guess yeah, Americans the being like Japanese movies too. He got bigger and bigger well, and bigger. Well, it's probably well, because buildings got bigger and bigger and bigger. Probably. That's probably. True. In the American movies it's because they were like it's make you big. Well, so what's that uh well, In comparison to buildings, if you really look up how many feet that is and then like even buildings we have downtown, there's not many of them. Mhm. But they're still taller, right? Well, and he, there's he's that bobbing uh, and weaving. It's like no wonder nobody can just kill him. Right? He can do, he, if he's running up and down the streets, he can't get a missile well, on him. And the the biggest he's ever been was in the Netflix movies. Yeah, where he's like taking up the size of Earth. Right. Well, he, not that big, but I used to have a Godzilla Earth. I used to have a de- desktop background where it was all the sizes of Godzilla up until the point, and then like all of them are like tiny on the bottom, and then. Godzilla from that is like in the background and he's like taking up the whole screen. Like he's yeah. massive he's in that absolutely in that series. In that series. Um, but yeah, all these monsters. <clears throat> water is a good place to go. Water, water monsters have always existed. People have always been like, there's something in there. I ain't doing it. Well, ain't like, going in the there. ocean, I honestly think is more scary than space. It's the fact that we live here. Right. And we still don't know everything about it. We've been on exactly. Earth for so long now and we've had the technology we had the technology to go to the moon but somehow we don't have the technology to reach the bottom of our oceans yet yeah, yeah we sent a drone <clears throat> out of our own solar system right and we has completely left the milky way hell we no, reestablished solar contact oh solar system it. sorry we not re- universe we reestablished no, contact <laughs> galaxy we galaxy. lost contact and reestablished contact with it yeah that's insane. We can take pictures of black holes. I was I was blowing it way more out of proportion. You can't leave the universe. We're all He's in literally it. Voyager has literally left our dimension. He has left the building. He has traveled so far. He's beyond <laughs> Pluto. Don't we have like a math equation on with him or something? Yeah, we have. I if I remember correctly, it's like. Basically, the coordinates of Earth as we understand it in coordination to the universe or the galaxy. You remember when we used to think we were the center of the universe? Yeah, people like, yeah, we were like, oh, yeah. We're the center of the universe. No. God made us. (laughs) And we were like, oh, God. We found black holes. We found black holes. They've been swallowing things forever. Then we saw what the heck heat death is, and that's coming. Mm. It's terrifying. But yeah, water. (laughs) Anyway. There's all uh, not thought uh, talking about things that don't keep me up late at night. Yeah, we got like Loch Ness monster. <laughs> <laughs> well, Loch Ness monster, the Kraken, like those yeah. are all in the water. The Hook Island monster, the the giant the, tadpole, the, the missing link, like from Monsters vs. <laughs> Aliens. I think it's an actual creature, like that Monsters vs. Aliens it took they, inspiration. I think of. they called it the missing link. It's like based off of like the Fiji mermaid. I thought. I don't know. You know what we have. At her fingertips? Yeah, the summit of all human knowledge. The internet. But there's, I think it, water monsters are just like, they've been, water monsters have been around probably as long since 
humans have been around. Yeah. yeah, as long as we've been able to think to fear. Right. There's always been that dude that walks out slightly in the water and a fish brushes past his leg and he's like, uh, have you ever been like again. in the ocean or in the lake and some like a fish or a piece of seaweed will brush against your leg and I have to get out for five minutes because I'm like that could have been anything, man. Yeah, like I've never actually had that happen. I I went down to I went uh, to uh, North Carolina for a wedding, and there was there was freaking piece of seaweed that was like tickling all of us, <laughs> and I was like, man, this is creeping me out. I hate I hate the ocean. Like, Do you hate the ocean? I don't like not being able to touch the bottom, and it's I, it's probably because I've been able to touch the bottom of pools for like most oh, of my ma- life. It makes you it's insecure. terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it's just I'm like, it's, well, and I went down to Lake of the Ozarks the other week weekend, and like our the where our dock was, like it was forty feet deep. I'm like, oh, that's great. That's crazy, man. It's a, like natural lakes, or even like. With the deaths, you know what I mean? Right. It's so much more than you ever really want to think about. Like, imagine being some early off dude. Like, you have to use a torch for light, and you're out by water, and it's dark, and you move the torch. And obviously, there's other crap in the water. There's shadows everywhere, and you see something that looks like a giant monster. You're going to crap your loincloth. Imagine the first person to see an alligator or crocodile. Yeah. Like, like, that's a That's a freaking dinosaur. <laughs> All right, what's your story that you have? That, like, out of, like, things that we didn't understand before. Right. That gorillas, that's a perfect one. Like, originally, gorillas were a story from, like, they're like, oh, there's these creatures. They're, they're called the gorilla. And people are like, nah, that ain't real. No. You're making crap <laughs> up. And people are like, dude, these things are kind of like that story. We shouldn't name them after that. And it's like, it's because they are, it's that. <laughs> dunce you just didn't believe it <laughs> <laughs> well imagine like when a uh, sad story like when we were taking people from africa or like and they're like yeah we have these crazy animals that have like 50 foot long necks i know the giraffe well, i mean we, i know giraffes knew about all those there. creatures before we started doing that it was more like a deceit of like, like hey you're not coming back <laughs> like, what yeah, it turns out you're, like, kind of, you know, you don't get smallpox or you've already been exposed to all of our germs, but the people over here haven't, so they keep that's dying. The, that's the one thing that, like, white people sucked at throughout history. Everywhere they went, they were like, hey, hello, disease. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it, we just, we are putting it out there. If you look at everywhere in history, we are the bringers of death. Well, because we're, like, not we, I mean, like, at the time, England, like, Europe I, I, was I the only place that was, like, booming in population, I guess, at that time. So, like... Uh, not exactly. It's the fact that where our recorded history is from and the amount of people that were like, yeah, let's just dump our poop in the street. <laughs> it was really high. Like, most people... Hey, that lake that we drink out of? Let's shit in it. Dump, <laughs> dump the poop out there. It's like, we're, we're getting super off topic from, like, cryptids and monsters. But, like, after the fall of the Roman Empire, plumbing was just, like... Yeah, screw that. We don't need that. <laughs> we don't need Let's just crap on the floor. Well, dude. Like, there was bottoms of churches were basically, like, where you dump poop. Right. And every so often people would have to clean it, and then they well, forget to clean well, it. Well, see, I want to know. Is like, New when, diseases would be born. Right. Well, I want to know is, like, when we went to, when we traveled across the pond to get to America for the first time, which we thought was India. Why didn't we get any diseases from that? Because were we just they, like I said, I think it comes from Europe being like the center hub of people just like throwing poop at each other. I mean poop fights. Pretty much. And then like all these people on the other side of the world having just different ways of life. They didn't do these this stupid thing. They were like, "Hey, let's keep our streets clean. Let's not poop on each other." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so getting back to to actual the actual topic of the ep- episode, I have down uh, Goat Man, or we could talk about one of the like I don't know if you consider this a cryptid, but something that we've all joked about, something that we've all known about since elementary school, probably before that, Bloody Mary. Oh, oh yeah, dude, that's an episode we need to have. I don't know if you consider her a cryptid, urban legend, or urban legend. Own. 
I'd call that an urban legend because it's much newer. Because Bloody Mary, we can't say the name anymore because I've already said it twice. You can but, say it like five <laughs> times when we don't have a mirror in a dark bathroom. But like, I remember people like, oh, we went in the bathroom and we turned off the lights and we said her name like three times. It was crazy and she didn't show up. Like, like, it's like, like it reminds <laughs> me of a Brandon <laughs> Rogers sketch like when he does the kid voices. Right. <laughs> Like, we said Bloody Mary, and she didn't show up. I don't know what to do. Maybe her name is Jerry. Bloody Jerry, Bloody Jerry. <laughs> Bloody Dewey. <laughs> Just, like, it's something so I, ridiculous. I don't know if I'm going to call her a crypt, it, the story a cryptid, but it's easily urban legend. And she's, like, multiple characters have, have been based off of Right, her it's, it's an old story. Right. Well, like, the, the character that comes to mind... Now that's kind of based off of her is the can the Candyman, and it's just because it's relevant because a new movie's coming out. But like, say Candyman three, four, five times, it's, or uh, three times in a mirror, I believe is the original. What the movie said, right? And that was a, and after I'll be Bloody honest, Mary. I'm not sure what was first, if it was Candyman or Bloody Mary, in terms of like saying it in front of a mirror, because it's always kind of been a thing to like say a spirit's name, because like Beetlejuice had that. Yeah, yeah. Beetlejuice three times. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. It's, yes. like, it's an old thing. Yeah. It's like, right. like spirit boards. It's the same thing. Talking with the dead. There's no place like home. There's yeah. no place like home. <laughs> Clicking your heels and There's using no place spirit like yeah. You guys would have crapped your pants if I just had disappeared just then. If you did that. <laughs> Please don't. I, I'd have so many more questions than I did yeah. before. Wait, we're at his home. <laughs> Not even that. <laughs> did yeah. you just get taken to the front door? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to mention her because very popular Legend in quotation marks, yeah. like, don't yeah. say her name three times in front of a mirror. Oh, you wanted to talk about the Goatman. Goatman, yeah. Goatman's Bridge. Goatman's Bridge, We need man. to visit that one day. There's a great game based off of Goatman. I love Goatman. So, shout out to Oompaville. <laughs> he kind of introduced me to the character. He's a YouTuber. He doesn't do video games anymore, but... Goatman video game, you say? Yeah, there's a Goatman video game where you're oh. basically a... a you are you play as goat man. No, you're a watch. You're in a watchtower, and like you keep getting like calls on the radio of like help us, and then like you go there, and then like they're dead. They're dead, and then you go back, and then goat man's like at your door, the glowy red eyes and horns. All right. Yeah, and I don't goes, know. And he goes back. I I kind of think like go, <laughs> he like, makes Seth Rogen noises and stares you down while you sleep. Well, like so like. Goat man and like moth man. There's a lot of something man. Yeah, like, and I, I think that comes man from bear it's, pig. It's, yeah, right. <laughs> it's easy to label it as that. Man like bear the same pig. reason superheroes are like that. Right. So moth man because it's in the shape of a man. Batman because it's a man. But it's but he wears a but bat wears suit. A bat suit. <laughs> man bear pig because he's a man bear and pig. Yeah, he's half bear, half man, half and pig. And he speaks pig Latin. Is, is that actually part of the joke? I don't know. Because it's been a long time since I've seen it. I don't know. I, I, just, I just said that just because whatever. But, like, there's so many things out there that always end with man. man well, and like, we didn't really talk like about the, the Loch Ness Monster earlier. Yeah. I, I, was like, you say, I had a good it. one for you. Like, Loch Ness. Oh, man. There's so many. Loch Ness gonna, Monster. Like, isn't there, like, a. Cryptids. There's, like, a. a pro, still, right now, there's a prize for like proof of Loch Ness monster. Yeah, and it's where ran is it? by the exact person that you'd think would where be running is it? that. Where is that at? Loch Ness? Yeah. Scotland. Scotland. I, I knew it was in that area, but I didn't want to say something. I don't something remember that wasn't north, right. south, east, west, which part of Scotland it's in, but it's in Scotland. Right. But like there's still a prize if you get a good picture of if that. You can uh, find evidence of the Loch Ness monster. And like as big as they say the Loch Ness monster is, you find something oh yeah it was, the lake isn't the ocean like oh, right it's a lock right it's, it's not that it's big unless there's massive underground tunnels like the hollow earth theory that's I mean, just full I know, of water i know like i saw something on the history channel which isn't really history anymore but that's another topic uh it, it will come. like it there was a uh, sharks in a lake somewhere in, like lake superior maybe i don't know i saw a movie about that there's stuff that happens where like Sharks will swim up freshwater streams. I read streams. a book about that once. It was like a... Was it an I Survived book? I th no. It was like just a story about this these two kids and one died to the shark or something like that. It was like, <gasps> shark in the river, that's not supposed to happen. But that sounds a lot like the I Survived book. It, might, it, it, it might be that. I don't even remember the type of shark. It was, it was. not a big book. It was a children's book. Right. So, yeah, so it was like, small. 
Um, what was I saying? Well, like, even, like, there's river dolphins. So, like, maybe. Yeah, think about how many stories like that have happened. And people it was are just like, a dolphin. There's something in the river. And it was just some freak occurrence. Like right. Like, sharks swimming up a freshwater stream by Well, accident. so they do that sometimes to, like, get get a faster way to, the like, the other side of the. An area. An, of an area, right. Like, they'll swim up. Imagine just going through, like, being in California and there'd be, like, a little river. And then be like, oh, there's a shark right there. It's like, <laughs> well, <laughs> guess I'm not, yep, going home. So there's this, should we talk about Jaws? I don't I don't know if you consider it, like, a monster. I don't know if I consider that, like, this. I mean, it was a book. People always believe that megalodons are out there. Like, I don't know, man. People think that they're at, like, the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Like, right. that's kind of like, the whole. What are they living off of? Right, that's kind of like the whole, like, uh, plot of Meg. The movie right, Meg. Like, what are what are they surviving off? There's of? nothing down there but like single cell organisms and tiny creatures. Like yeah, these bunch are a bunch of really weird looking fish, right, like anglers. These I are mean, SpongeBob giant bo- SpongeBob bottom fed, so anything can. Right. <laughs> these are. They would have to evolve. They would have That's to. Filter ev- feeding. Thank you. <laughs> the, whatever. They would have to have evolved greatly to but be like, able to live down there for one, because they they they're sharks. They're they're used to being higher right. up. They're very sensitive right. to like their surroundings, which is lots of people will be like, "No, there's no way that this can be this." And then we get proven wrong every day when a shark does something we didn't expect. Well, so like underwater volcano this areas, is, like sharks swimming inside of the volcanic area, and it's like you weren't supposed to be doing that. <laughs> so this is very relevant to what we're talking about right now. There's this new documentary out, and the guy from Planet Earth, David Attenborough. David Attenborough? He does yeah. the voiceover for it, and it's a documentary on how the Earth has changed since COVID happened. It's very, very interesting. Like, the water, the ocean is quieter since there's not as many cruise ships, so we actually got to document a mother w- whale leaving her calf close to shore so she can go hunt with other adult whales. Interesting. Like, and this is, we've never seen this happen before, and people are like, I, or he talks about, like, new findings, and I'm like, I looked over at mom, my mom, because we were watching it together. I was like, this is probably just the old ways that they're reverting back to because they have had to do things yeah, differently. Before we were really recording and before right. boats we were such a huge mainstay well, and then across they, the ocean. They talked about this town in India that for the past 30 years, they haven't been able to see the, see the Himalayas because of smog. Wow. And like three weeks into COVID lockdown, like total lockdown there. They could see the Himalayas for the first time in 30 years. People are like, oh, my God, mountains. Like, I looked over at mom. I was like, maybe this is like just God. Like, COVID was ar- is around because God was like, Earth just needs a break, man. Like, <laughs> from all of human shit. Like, let's sit down and have a moment. Uh, L.A. had the, the, the cleanest air since the 90s. This year, last in twenty twenty, that surprised me. I thought it would have been like the sixties, or like it, it, it was in nineteen something, sometime in the nineteen hundreds. It probably wasn't the nineties, but nineteen hundreds, like some that time in there. In but the like past decades, right? It's been yeah. a long time since they've had oxygen this clean, and like there's these birds living by the Golden Gate Bridge, and like they haven't been able to like hear every note of their song like their breeding so like they're expecting a massive spike in their breeding numbers because yeah. like they could hear each other's songs right now instead of the traffic that is going over the golden gate bridge yeah like this they was like the mating call. this might have been a crappy year for humans but this has been probably the best year for nature yeah for a it, long it should stand long as like time a good symbol of like this is what we've done Right, and, the, like, people are, like, they're, like, they'll never, people are talking, like, talking about, like, how cruise ships are never going to be, like, as common as they were. Like, they're going to, like, limit, like, the amount of cruise ships that are out in the oceans well, yeah, because of how a, quiet. Basically a Petri dish. The, I think they said it was, like, 70% quieter in the oceans. That's, oh, that's or remarkable. 60 or 70% quieter. So, the reason, like, the, back to the mother and her calf, like, she left the calf, like, close to shore because she could hear further away. So she if something was wrong, she could rush right over there. So but it's more effective for her to hunt with adult whales, obviously. So she le- leaves her calf by shore and she goes and hunts and if something happens, she could hear further 
Yeah. Or here, like, whatever. Right. As we also do. Right. Yeah. So, like, I just thought this was crazy. I was like, yeah. oh, my God, dude. Like, COVID may have sucked, but it was great for Earth. It was kind of yeah, like a reset button. There, there was a story about, like, a beach that, like, I can't remember where it was, but a beach guy had been overtaken by, like, wild cattle. Really? And the wild cattle said, no, F you, we're not leaving whenever the beach reopened. Huh. So, yeah, there's just a bunch of cows near your beach. Now. Well, and see, they talked about this, uh, there's this deer. It's a spe- uh, form of a deer that lives in Japan. Yeah. And this monument, and, like, a big part of its diet now is rice crackers. Oh, yeah? Because this whole city, like, basically took over their old eating, like, ground, like, feeding grounds. Yeah. So, no, no one being at the the temple, they yeah. had to like they like migrated through the city and have been eating through small patches of grass, and they keep migrating, <laughs> and like they're like these deer will be way healthier without <laughs> their main diet being rice crackers, like, yeah, it, I just if you guys I I forget what the name of it is I think it's called the year the Earth changed or something among that I think it's on Hulu, maybe yeah. Just look for David Attenborough's new uh, documentary. documentary. It is awesome. It's only 45 minutes long, so yeah, it's nothing like Planet <laughs> to the length of watching all of Planet Earth or Planet Earth 2. So. God. Um, I remember we had to watch that in class. I love Planet Earth. I know, but it was just took so long. Um, but yeah, watch that. <laughs> I know it's off topic. We're off topic a lot in this episode, but. Yeah, you want me to name off some more monsters and see, like, what tickles your fancy and yes. talk about that? We have time for one more monster. Uh, I'll just list some off and see which one you'd want me to go about. All right. And uh, listeners, if you want a part two to this, we will do a part two because there is no shortage amount to yeah, talk let's, about Yeah, let's just do it for ourselves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Viewers don't get a choice in this. <laughs> okay. We'll have fun. Start listening off. We got Hodag, Kentucky Goblins, Loveland Frogmen, Jersey Devil, the Jackalope, Mokila Membe, Mongolian Deathworms. The Jackalope. Here's- you want to go with the jackalope? I think I this is the that's the name out of the few that I've actually heard of. You I didn't even get to the fun ones yet. Okay, keep going. Oh, chupacabra. I want to talk about the chupacabra. chupacabra? Yes. I was going to say I'm glad we at least got to the vampire section. <laughs> we'll say we can talk about vampires oh, yeah. no, for a, a whole episode. There's a lot. We <laughs> I, I I'm a, honestly letting you two take the wheel with this episode. I, I, really, I, I haven't really talked much. A solid 40 because I minutes. don't really know what the hell we're talking? I mean, I know. Well, so we're the chupacabra about. isn't like the goat sucker. The goat sucker. It is. He gives the goat kidnaps. The goat suck. There's a whole episode on Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> there actually is, but like whatever. But this thing will kidnap your goat in the middle of the night, suck all of its blood out of its body, and then it won't eat it. It, it just sucks it. the blood out. It's a vampire dog. Goat. Essentially, it's a vampire dog man, and like the weirdest thing about it is that it's a natural occurrence that we can find. Something's draining blood out of things. They don't actually eat it. Yeah, they don't eat goats or chickens. Do they just th- suck the blood out of it. This is a in Mexico, right? Like this is where it, I believe it, it started, started or... in Puerto Rico. Okay, it's like mostly in Latin America though. And then it started expanding forward and forward, or north and north. So start migration of Mexico. Patterns. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like you'll find people in Texas that'll talk about it. Right. They'll having problems with like their goats will have just well just so dead with puncture wounds and the blood's gone. <laughs> I don't know. Like, what is like a like a normal explicit explanation for this? Because there's never blood around it, just right. drained it's, of it's blood. It's as if like I don't even think there's much blood ever found on the ground. Right. It's been a long time since I've actually, you know, looked up somebody who's had a r- quote unquote run in with a chupacabra. But, like, the animals will just be, like, drained of blood. They're dead on the ground. No help in them. They don't know what happened. And it's obvious the other animals will be spooked for a few days. Nobody ever really knows what happened. Yeah. There's probably a scientific explanation out there that we just don't know. Like, Right, you and me, maybe scientists know. Maybe we haven't discovered it's, it's the reason why. Probably might know, but right. like right now, we like we're maybe sitting here. What in if this recording studio? Like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Um, what if like they just have like pricked themselves in the foot and they just casually bleed out through like a That's several the thing. weeks? It's, it's usually in the neck. That's so weird. It, 
vampire style. <laughs> well, so, oh, bless you. Excuse me. Um, well, so like vampire bats, like they'll get on like horses. Hooves. Yeah. Like hoof. Like they'll suck blood out like through the hoof. Yeah, like through their hoof. If if it, they can get into a tent, they'll suck it from your big toe. That's so hand. weird, man. That's yeah, so weird. And the way they do it is they just, it's like a small puncture and they take their fangs out and then they just lap the blood up. Yep, that's so weird, man. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Like, do you, so what came first, the vampire, the vampire, 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 vampire bat? The word vampire is what we know to quote unquote be before, but the vampire yeah. bat, of course, has evolved over ever. Right. Yeah. Well, so like what? Do you think there was a people out there who actually sucked people's blood out of their bodies? Uh, maybe. I think they there say totally, that, there's been cults out there that totally would have done they that. They say the smartest vampires drain their victims to just the brink of death, <laughs> the brink of death so they could regain their strength and feed again. That's an office quote. Or some sort of an office quote. Dwight says it, of course. Um, but... What we know is, like, our strongest idea of vampire is the old Romanian story yeah. mm -hmm. of Strigoi. Person uh, Nosferatu. <laughs> that's a name. <laughs> uh, that's because some German studio couldn't get the rights to Dracula, so they made their own. <laughs> Nosferatu. That's, that's also where the idea of light killing a vampire comes from, is that exact movie. Really? Seriously? That wasn't a thing before that movie. Huh. Oh, they were so supposed they to sleep it. during the day because it's easier to kill people at night. So that's, oh. like, recent, in quotation yeah. marks. within the past... That'll be a hundred years soon. Nosferatu. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Yeah, it's a silent movie. Of course, it came out all nineteen twenty something. Yeah. Huh. I don't remember the exact year. I know one of the movies. It's not a hundred yet. It's coming very soon. I'll check that real quick. But yeah, the story of like vampires all around the world. Yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. You cannot nineteen twenty two. That's Jeez. gonna be in a hundred year old movie next year. God. Wow, 100 years since 1920. And that's also not the only name for the movie. It's also been called, like, The Vampire. Mm -hmm. Or, like, Der Vampire. The, roar, the Roaring... Boys, the Roaring Twenties were 100 years ago. Yeah. Great Jesus Gatsby was... A I saw... A meme. Did I send you that meme today where it was, like... Uh, I, I just realized that people born in 2010 are 11 years old now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, ew! So, ending on vampires and young ages uh thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast let us know down in the comments below what is your favorite cryptid or monster it doesn't have to be cryptid or legend necessarily it could just be your favorite monster uh anything you guys want to add to that yeah tell us your story have you had a run-in with bigfoot have you seen a shapeshifter a skinwalker have you seen a ghost have you seen something that goes bump in the night tell us in the comments the secret word for this week's episode is uh What's a monster that it could be? You have a list of monsters. What's the secret word, Wyatt? Uh, let's say... Hmm. Champ. Champ? As in the Lake Champlain monster. Champ. The word is champ. You all know how to spell that. All right. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.